Hello, my name is Kokan and welcome to an, on my new series. And that series is on um, building a growth mindset. And today we have the wonderful Alison to talk to us all about her career, her thoughts on building a growth mindset, but also sharing her thoughts and inspiration on what it's like to be a common professional. So my forthcoming book, Be Number One Cheer Leader, is coming out at, in October. And that book is really about, you know, using the entrepreneurial journey to understand how we can fight fear, um, you know, we use imposter syndrome and build confidence. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to the lovely Alison. Alison, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. I am a huge fan. I love uh, all the messages you put out and I'm looking forward to diving in to be your number one cheerleader, not just to read it, but also to use it as a resource. I think books like this are great to use as a resource guide. And so after I've um, kind of gone through it the first time, I'll definitely have it by my side, using it um, for tips, advice, and motivation, and also just to keep my mind focused on the right things when uh, giving myself positive affirmation and encouragement. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allison. So Allison, tell us about yourself. You know, what do you do and why do you do it? Well, I am a professional communicator and I've been doing this for many years now. Um, I love writing. I love uh, digital communications and I definitely enjoy working for large multinational corporations. Um, I think it's exciting to work with people from all over the world. I really enjoy um, befriending and interacting with people of different cultures. Uh, living in different cult countries and communities. Um, that's just something that really um, helps me and fuels my energy for the work that I do. So um, that's what I've been doing. I'm also an author. I self-published my own books. So I have a children's book series that I've been publishing for over 10 years. Um, and I also have two community history books that I've published about my community in New Orleans where I grew up and it's about uh, the black people who lived and worked there and I also have some professional communications ebooks to help professional communicators with websites and other digital technology so uh, I love writing I love communicating and uh, right now I'm writing a blog on LinkedIn about healing black professionals so um, I'm definitely staying fulfilled in uh, my work, my passion, and my my talents. Oh, amazing and amazing. And, and tell us what it's like to, to have built a um, career as a Black woman in corporate America. Could have been tough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been very difficult. <laughs> Which it's one of the reasons why I think uh, your book is uh, going to be extremely helpful for us. Uh, us uh, black women and black professionals, because uh, that's basically how I was able to make it. Of course, I went to college and um, became educated in the skills and crafts of communications with an emphasis on writing. Um, but you're right, uh, going into corporate America was difficult, being a minority, um, dealing with racism, discrimination, sexism as a woman, um, these were all things that I faced and I found myself having to really draw from my strength and my own um, personal beliefs about who I am to overcome a lot of the things that I had to endure. And um, being a faith-filled person, you know, growing up with a strong um, spiritual background, I basically relied on a lot of messages like scriptures and devotional messages and I literally would go to work every day pull up a devotional read it um, and just internalize these positive uplifting and encouraging messages and when it got really tough I would actually listen to positive and encouraging messages like on my earbuds um, so that I could just remain positive through the adversity and the things that I was facing. So that's how I got through. I mean, I had instances where people would actually ask me, you know, how were you able to deal with that situation? Or how did you 
do this because I wouldn't have been able to keep my composure. I would have become angry. I would have blown up. I would have gotten upset. And basically it was just the daily discipline of training myself to remain positive um, and to look at all these circumstances as something that could either help me grow or move to the next level. And I think also I never gave up, you know, no matter how many obstacles were thrown at me, no matter how many um, promotions were, you know, given to others in my face positions, opportunities were denied me. I never gave up. I always felt like I'm going to find that one opportunity that matches me. I'm going to get that opportunity to grow my talent. I'm going to get that promotion. So I never gave up. I remained positive and I just kept pushing through. But it definitely was, it was very difficult, you know, dealing with um, head on uh, negativity and racism. It's not easy. And it's not something that I would recommend anyone do um, by choice. Um, but I made the decision to do it because I was looking at the bigger picture. You know, I was looking at, okay, this is a large corporation. This is a large organization. Um, I can find another opportunity somewhere within this organization where I'll be treated better, where I'll be celebrated for my talents and where, you know, I'll get the promotions or the recognition that I'm working hard to achieve. So that's why I did it. Um, but in these days and times, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's just too hard on you mentally to do something like this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so you, you've already talked about some of the um, ways you, you overcame that adversity, but would you be able to share with us, you know, how do you find like healthy outlets to deal with all of the, the stress that you, you clearly were experiencing whilst you're doing that kind of work? I think for me, um, just remaining in community uh, with my church, um, having people that loved me unconditionally, um, and didn't care, you know, what I did for a living or how well I performed. I think just remaining in contact with those people, like my family, my community, um, my husband, you know, once, once I um, did get married, that helped out a lot as well, because I had a partner who could just be there for me during the tough times having good friends, you know, making good friends within um, the work environment who are experiencing similar things. And also the affinity groups like the Black Employee Network, that helped me out tremendously as well. Um, and later on in life, as I continued to grow and work, I started to leverage the benefit of professional counseling as well. Just having one-on-one -on -one counseling, uh, someone to talk to and share my experiences and then having an objective view on how to deal with it and also what I was dealing with. Because when I really started working with a counselor one-on-one -on -one and explaining some of the challenges and the criticism that I was facing and just how I was constantly trying to perform, prove that you know I was doing a great job and I was not you know, um, deserving of any of this really harsh and nitpicky criticism that I was receiving, um, I was made aware that it was not really my effort that could win this person over, that I was dealing with a narcissist. And so this type of information, I really could not have come to these conclusions on my own. Like, I don't know enough about personality disorders to be able to diagnose whether or not my boss is a narcissist. So having the benefit of a counselor tell me this and then have me educate myself like she told me, watch these videos, read these articles about this type of behavior disorder, this personality trait, and realize what you're dealing with and also know there's nothing you can do. <laughs> so that really freed me to realize, okay, I just need to find a more healthier work environment because I could be doing the best job ever. It's not going to make a difference. So I think as I've grown, leveraging the support of a professional counselor has been extremely valuable to me because before I was dealing with a lot of this stuff and not realizing what types of personalities I was 
you know, working on, they're just thinking, this is the way the working world is. Like everybody hates their boss. So you just have to put up with it. But as I've grown and also had experiences where I had loving and kind and compassionate bosses, then I started to realize, okay, wait a minute. Not all people in leadership are like this. I need to go and get additional help and support in dealing with these instances that I'm encountering. So that's my experience. And that's one of the reasons why I started that blog on healing black professionals to share with black people that you don't have to endure, you know, harsh and unhealthy treatment in a working environment. Um, and if you are, you may want to get some professional support to help you endure so that your mental health doesn't suffer, but also get information. You could be dealing with people with severe behavioral or personality disorder. Mm. Wow, no, that is really helpful. And it's super helpful that you explain to people what a narcissistic personality is like, because I think that some people may have experienced that, but have not really known like what they're dealing with. And they just, you know, have been waiting for someone to give that explanation. And also to know that that going out, reaching out to a counselor or a therapist is something that is really helpful. Um, something that can really benefit you. It's not something that means that you're a failure or you should be ashamed of, because I think a lot of people, especially in the black community, are not really in that accepting um, of that profession as something that's, some, you know, a further advice that we can um, seek out. Um, in addition to all the other tools that we have at our disposal, so I think that is really amazing that you shared that. And so I just want to pick up with you where you already talked about your, your blog. Um, tell us more about, you know, what got you started and like, you know, how you see it developing. Uh, and please, you know, tell um, our viewers like about one or two of the blogs that have already been just so they can get a flavor for like what they might expect to read. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yes. Well, with the blog, um, I started it kind of right at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that had been going on with the protests here in the United States surrounding uh, just the unjust murders of innocent Black people um, by the police. And um, as those things were occurring in the corporate setting, a lot of Black people were meeting and having listening sessions and Black employee networks were gathering and just talking about how traumatic these experiences were, especially the murder of George Floyd. And his murder kind of re-traumatized a lot of Black people and brought about the memories of their experiences with racism at work or in their communities where they live, either with the police or neighbors. So it was just def definitely disheartening to hear these stories. And of course, me being a Black person, it was re-traumatizing for me as well because I had a family member to be murdered, not by the police, but just murdered, no one investigated, nothing happened. It was just like another Black person killed and it was just something that was very tragic. And so um, I was experiencing the same and I really wanted to put some information out there um, to let people know, okay, even though we have been traumatized, uh, racially uh, through our experiences in living as Black people, um, there's help that we can receive to help us cope with this. And so that was my uh, number one motive for writing the blog. And so with my first blog, um, I wrote, some, wrote something that was very positive, very encouraging, um, you know, just imploring people to keep hope in their hearts stay faithful and positive, but also consider seeking professional therapy during this time. Um, because people were saying, I'm so tired, I'm just overwhelmed, I can't take this anymore. <clears throat> you know, they were just expressing a lot of emotions and from what they were saying, <clears throat> excuse me, it just sounded like a lot of hopelessness. And I think that that's a sign you know, that's a red flag. If you feel like you're, you're overwhelmed, you're having feelings of hopelessness, it might be time to talk to someone to get some support. And so that's basically where I started with my blog. Um, I wanted to reach out to Black professionals because Blacks who work in these multinational corporations have the benefit of employee assistance programs, 
that can direct them to counseling services. Some companies have on-site counselors that you can talk to. Um, they can pair you up with people in your neighborhood or in your community. It's covered by your health insurance benefits. So I really wanted to just put out the word like, hey, if you have access to these services, if you have these kinds of insurance benefits, it's not gonna hurt you to start speaking with a counselor. You know, don't sleep on these opportunities. And so that was my first blog post. That was what it was about. And I wanted to do the series uh, because I just wanted to continue to provide resources. So as I developed, I did a seven part series. And so as I continue to develop each blog post and each topic, um, I just shared uh, information about uh, black therapists. Um, there's a um, there's a black therapist in Atlanta who started a whole website called Therapy for Black Girls. And she has a resource and a list of black therapists around the country um, that people can talk to who are trained in helping people through racial trauma and other traumas that black people um, traditionally experience growing up here in the United States. Um, there are also support groups. Um, I put information out about yoga, exercise, meditation, healthy eating, have healthy living, um, connecting to your faith community. And so throughout the series, I just continue to share information, perspectives, advice, and just, I think basically starting the conversations, starting the conversations that may have been taboo in our community or <clears throat> things that people in our community may have dismissed and saying, you know, well, therapy is just not a part of what we do or my family never sought therapy and it's just something that black people don't do. You know, we turn to Jesus or we go to the church, which is great because those are all good things that help us and uplift us and basically got us to where we are now. Um, but I think if you're a faithful person, um, God rules over all creation. He, he, everyone here is a gift from God. So I think we should not dismiss the God-given abilities of a professional therapist um, that could help us in overcoming not only traumas of the past, but current traumas that are continuing to happen every day as more murders are taking place and more injustices are being experienced. I think it should be a part of our toolkit to have someone and others like yourself to help us to make it through these challenging times. Mm, mm, yeah, it, it's definitely a very challenging time um, for everyone. Um, and what is, it, it's interesting that it is um, challenging, but there are also opportunities. So what I'd like to ask you about is obviously people are, you know, using jobs, but also thinking that maybe it's a time to start their own business because, you know, there are lots of things that people can actually offer um, and things that people need at this time. So as a communications professional, do you have a tip that you could give someone who wants to communicate about the business? Like what would you suggest that they do like to start them off? I think um, starting off, definitely connect with the people that are in your network already. Start talking to your friends, um, your confidants and people that you can trust, people you respect, any mentors you may have and just start um, talking to them about your ideas. Hey, what do you think? Um, I wanna start my own business. I think as an example, um, I have always thought about doing communications consulting um, and I've actually done it for a few people, but not officially. And I had a friend to just say, hey, have you ever thought about it? And I said, yeah, of course I've thought about it, but I just don't know which route would be the best fit for me? And she said, well, I think you should maybe look at um, helping internal communicators by developing their overall strategic plan, maybe train, provide some training. And um, she said, I think that would be something that you would be really successful at. And I, I never thought about it in that way. I thought maybe I would have to go more of the traditional route where I'd be doing websites for people or their social media and things like that. So I think starting off is great to talk to people in your own network, 
bounce ideas off of your friends, your confidant, maybe a coach like yourself, and just kind of continue to flesh out your ideas. And then once you have something really solid, you've developed your um, branding. Um, I think avenues like LinkedIn and other social media platforms are definitely the way to start getting the word out um, and maybe even consider some social media advertising down the line. Um, but digital is definitely the way to go right now. I think I've seen a lot of people, especially with um, black businesses, small businesses, really take off from the use of digital media um, and just um, being on, you know, those social platforms connected to their friends and family and colleagues and um, talking about their products and putting it out there with basically little to no investment in spreading the word and building up a pretty sustainable business for themselves that's gaining them some national exposure. So I say, I would say whatever your business is, you definitely want to start with, you know, developing your website and your social media strategy and just continually, consistently work those plans um, and talk to those people um, about it and continue to put the word out to build your business and just stay open to learning you know, attending workshops and seminars that can help you enhance your brand, do more um, promotions face-to-face -face and things like that, I, th I think helps out along the way. And staying open to receiving help from other people. I think once we launch out and we start putting our messages or our talents out, you know, people start to reach out. Like you reached out to me and say, hey, I want to speak with you about this or, hey, I think you should do this. I think just staying open to receiving help and support will also help to grow a business. But I'm definitely in favor of Black professionals starting their own business, even if you have a full-time job. Like me, I worked full-time, um, but I've written books consistently since 2001. So I think it's definitely something that we should do because for me, writing my books, having my own presence outside of my business, it kept my self-worth intact. You know, my self-worth wasn't just tied to my job or whether or not I got a good performance evaluation or a raise every year. I was still nurturing my own self-fulfillment by being an author, by, you know, writing my own content, directing my own, um, artwork and creativity, when my book would launch, how I would promote it, what events I would attend to promote the books, like that gave me so much fulfillment because it was like I was in charge of my own destiny and my own enterprise, my own content. And I had direct connections with my audience and people were giving me positive encouragement and fulfillment in the work that I was doing. So I would say even if you're still working full time, you still you definitely should have something that fuels your passion and your desire that you should be doing outside of work, especially as a black person, because the stats are already showing us that we're not being promoted as we should. We're being denied those opportunities for advancement. We're not in leadership. So I think those things can be deflating and somewhat degrading um, to your self-worth when you're constantly on this treadmill running as fast as you can, but you're not seeing the results for your effort. And that's, that's where I think the small businesses and the consulting and the books and other things that you do outside of your job, that's where you really can receive that fulfillment and see that, hey, I can, you know, I can do these things, whether I'm getting the recognition from these larger entities or not. And, and that's what I've always done, you know, being an author, I've been a public speaker, and I also have my own nonprofit organization. So fulfillment, I try not to leave myself in a drought when it comes to um, expressing my gifts and my talents and what I love to do. I never want to leave myself in a drought. And I definitely 
never want to be dependent on just one source for me to be able to do that. I think that's just a recipe for maybe, you know, being deflated and being devalued. So for sure, I definitely believe that you should have some things going on outside of your day to day. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I definitely agree. Um, one thing I want to pick up with you is on how do you find the courage to be able to, to start something? Because you might feel like, well, you know, I'm in this job and, you know, it pays okay, but at least, you know, no one's going to judge me. You know, I, I do my bit um, and it's fine. But if I, you know, branch out by myself, then I will be judged. I am the forefront of this thing. It's not, I can't hide behind the company logo. <laughs> so what would you, your, your advice be there? <laughs> I would say uh, you, if you find yourself wavering in the courage, just keep going. I found myself in that position myself, like feeling afraid or second guessing myself. Um, but I think the thing that I've been able to be successful at is just continuing, you know, continuing to go on, continuing to write the books, continuing to publish, continuing to um, talk to other writers and that has helped me to overcome some of my insecurities. I think also as of late, all of this data that's been coming out about how black women in particularly are really, uh, not being treated fairly at work as a whole, that actually did the opposite for me, whereas it would be depressing, but it actually bolstered my confidence a little bit more because I felt like, okay, now I see why I had these experiences and it wasn't all on me. You know, it kind of gave me a sense of relief, like, whoo, you know, I thought I was doing something wrong. I wasn't working hard enough. I should have been going at it, you know, 10 times harder, making more sacrifices. But to get that type of information and see, okay, this was this is just based on bias. This is something that's outside of my control. It freed me. And so I would say not to give up. That's that's really the key, is just to continue to grow, keep going, stay committed, whether you feel anxious about it or not, whether you feel insecure, just do a little something each day towards it keep um, staying connected with positive people who will encourage you. Um, Cause that's the one thing I would say also that helped me. I got to some points where I didn't want to write my books anymore because I wasn't generating the type of income that I had expected to generate. And I was talking to a friend at work about it. And she said, you know, you can't give up. You can't quit because you're doing something so positive for your community that you just have to keep pushing through and just have, that friend to help me get over that low period really kept me going so I would say that's another thing is just surround yourself with positive encouraging people who see your gifts see your talent and they want to see you be successful and soar um, and those are the things that have helped me I've really done the best that I can to motivate myself but I have had those periods where I was like I don't know about this, but just having a community of people to cheer me on, encourage me, give me more information. And it seems like my network continues to grow as I continue to grow personally and professionally. I'm being connected to other people and they're all saying those same things and also providing more insight into those obstacles that do make you wanna quit or give up or feel insecure or feel like you can't do it. Their insight into those obstacles and sharing that they've experienced it as well. And this is why it, I think that helps you to draw closer to community and say, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not the only person having this issue. And there are people out here who are willing to help me um, to overcome. So that's what I would say. Sometimes on your part, you do run out of gas and you just don't have that inner strength. And that's where you can draw on the support and strength of others. 
Mm, no, that's fantastic. I, I completely agree. You know, you need to find the right people who motivate, who cheer and support you. Um, and you have to be able to be willing to step away from some relationships and say, you know what? No, this is not helping me to, you know, thrive or succeed. And I think that some people find it very um, difficult because, you know, they are their thoughts are confirmed by the people that they're hanging around with. But have they thought to actually move away from this, perhaps that they would be um, freed to have more positive thoughts and people who actually will like, actually know you can do more, you can be more, you know, mm -hmm. it takes time and effort, but you can definitely get there. So that's very inspirational. Thank you for sharing. So I just want to pick up with you to say that this month in the UK is Black History Month. Um, it's also recently been, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's also been a um, mental um, health um, day recently. So um, would you like to share a tip on mental health and well-being and also to tell us about your blog on uh, mental health? Oh, yes, for sure. Well, first, happy Black History Month. Thank um, you. So, um, I feel so proud and excited about Black history in the UK and just black people in general being celebrated it's definitely something that makes you feel really good and uh i, I i'm just so happy and overjoyed um that you guys are having this moment to reflect and celebrate because we've been through so much and so much negativity this year yeah <laughs> that it's wonderful to receive the love so i hope that everyone in the uk is uh, feeling the love and all of the black people are feeling celebrated and uplifted because it definitely helps in the healing process. And so I think mental health month, yes, for sure. We, we need to keep shining a spotlight on that and we need to pair, I think, mental health with, um, our community, you know, with black people all over the world. We, we need to start associating mental health with something that black people need to pay attention to take themselves about and start speaking about um, in our communities and i'm very hopeful that we can adopt you know healthier mental health um, proactive strategies to check in on our mental health and to make sure we're doing okay and if we're not doing okay get the support that we need personally i think when you look at everything that Black people have gone through, no matter where they are in this world, the traumas and the experiences that they've had, I really think that we all could benefit by talking to a therapist or a counselor, just to make sure that we're not holding on to any past traumas, we're not acting out of any past hurts, we're not carrying on any type of generational mental issues or unhealthiness. I think it's worth just evaluating and checking in like a checkup, you know, just like your annual mammogram or uh, if you had, like for me, historically in my family, people have diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease. So I go to the doctor annually I'm healthy, but I still go in. I have my blood test every year. And I talk to the doctor and say, you know, historically, these are the diseases that are in my family. And they ask you, they, they, they're like, yes, genetically, you could develop these diseases because you're in your family. But if you do these things like eat healthy, exercise, stay away from this, stay away from that then genetically you won't activate these diseases and have to deal with them. And I think it's the same applies with mental health. I think we need to talk to a mental health professional and say, okay, number one, I'm black. So historically, this is what black people have suffered, you know, in whatever country you might be living in, in my country. And you just, I think you need to talk about these issues and say, honestly, I don't think any black person is immune to these traumas. And so I really think that mental health uh, needs to be incorporated into our lifestyles, like an annual checkup to make sure that we won't have to deal with some of these debilitating health issues. I think we need to check in on our mental health to see, okay, how have I been coping with racial trauma? How have I been coping with some of these uh, experiences that I had 
you know, on my job or maybe even childhood experiences? How has that impacted me? Am I suppressing this? Do I need to talk it out? Do I need to get support and healing from this? And so that would be the thing that I would say we as a community really need to um, take note of and put the emphasis on. And I, I believe like with all other uh, things that we've grappled with as a community, we've been able to overcome it through education and awareness, support, and other people speaking out about the benefits of it within our community. I believe that we can do the same with mental health. The more we keep talking about it, the more we emphasize how important it is, I think we can definitely start seeing some turnarounds. And I think it's needed because that's one of the things that Black people communicated during these times was that the traumatic experiences are becoming overwhelming and they're compounded. So to me, that means, okay, it's time to put the brakes on. <laughs> We've been enduring for way too long. We need help. So that's, I think that's the new um, focus, I think, for us as a community. And I believe it's going to help us to be more healthier than we've ever been and to continue to overcome and achieve the things that we want to achieve, either outside of these corporate environments where we want to see ourselves successful or inside of these corporate environments. But either way, I really believe that all Black people whether you're a Black CEO or you're a Black person who is an individual practitioner, owns your own business, or you are working, you know, in a job that's underpaying you and undervaluing you, I think we all can benefit from, you know, some good counseling and just having a mental health check-in. Mm, no, well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for, for raising the spotlight to that issue because I think that is something that um, this unfortunate time has brought to the surface. And also I think what is good is having this conversation it helps to normalize that it is, you know, right to actually seek help. And that when the dam breaks, you've got to put the brake on, you need to not just be like, okay, it's broken, but I'm gonna make it carry on. <laughs> you need to be like, it's broken, I'm gonna take these steps as well as, you know, my faith and my friends and my family, you know? Um, yes. so that, that is really great that you have um, shined the spotlight on that and you can do, do so. So thank you so much for that. Um, so I'd just like to talk to you about growth mindset and like, what does that mean to you? And like, how do you action that in your life? Um, a growth mindset, I think for me, it's always staying open, willing to learn, willing to um, change, you know, and grow um, both personally and professionally. And I think they both go hand in hand. I think if you're growing professionally, it's going to have an impact on your personal life and vice versa. If you're growing personally, it will have an impact on your professional life, but I definitely try to keep, um, you know, maintain a growth mindset daily by reading, um, just um, staying connected to people who are bringing forth new ideas um, and talking to people who are in that growth mindset as well. Just staying connected to people who are not comfortable with staying stagnant or not growing or feel fearful of change, you know, not really buying into um, that type of way of thinking and just staying open. I think for me, it's really, it would be detrimental to not, you know, have a growth mindset. Um, because there are just way too many challenges um, that are out here and the challenges are continuing to grow. You know, they're not diminishing in any way. So I think staying open to growth and change and looking at yourself to see what you can do, because a lot of the external circumstances, you know, we can't control, but we can definitely um, develop those healthier responses to it. And we can definitely take the time to think about how we are going to function, you know, in any of the changes that happen on a broad scale externally. So I think for me, it just means um, reading, you know, doing research, remaining open, um, listening, and um, just surrounding myself with those types of people 
that are on that path. So I, and I would say with you, um, I, when you, when I saw, you know, your posts and your book about <laughs> being your number one cheerleader, I had never heard that before. So I've always heard about, um, positive affirmations and, uh, and I just started reading about self-empathy, you know, being kind and gracious with yourself. But I had never heard anyone say, you know, be your number one cheerleader. So I think just learning about, um, you know, your book, your concepts, your philosophies, that's a growth mindset as well. Just staying open and really listening and learning and receiving the messages and actually applying them like, yeah. This is, this is good, you know, this is something positive and this is something that I need to be aware of. Because I think for me, I, I was wanting to, you know, be my number one cheerleader and I would find myself affirming myself. Um, but until I really saw some of the things you were saying and how you were emphasizing that it has to be a priority, it has to be a discipline, you have to put work into it, you can't be lax with yourself on it it really woke me up and and to like okay this is really important and it's really critical that you do these things um with emphasis and a commitment as if you would for anyone else so i think that's a part of a growth mindset as well is it's not just um you know reading or finding out about the information but making the commitment to discipline yourself to do the work and apply it, you know, will help you as well. So I'm, I'm all for it. I'm working towards it. And I think it, it takes some grace and some time um, to continue on in it because it requires that you not just give it lip service, but you actually have to demonstrate and have some real tangible metrics towards what you're doing so you can actually see the results of whatever you're trying to achieve or what you've been longing for. Mm, no, you're right. I, I agree wholeheartedly with what you said. Um, it does take time. It, is, it can be a lifelong journey. But I think the main thing is to start and to not to be too hard on yourself and to know that there are going to be days when sometimes you just, you know, have a moment and you fall off the wagon, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's, it's the fact that you've been trying and that you're trying to move towards this place. It's, like I always say to everyone, it's no overnight success. It's no instant change. It's that yeah. consistent, persistent practice. Practice, practice, practice. And it's practice for a reason. <laughs> um, you know? So just before we finish up, I would just love to ask you, you know, like, obviously it's been like a really like tough year and people are just wondering, wow, how am I going to get through it? Um, what would be your tip to, you know, get through those bad days and what keeps you like going and, and motivated and seeing hope and op optimism for the, for the future? I would say um, to get through these, these times, if you can, um, if you can, if you have the resources and the, the benefits to get a professional counselor or a therapist in your life, you know, have someone that you can talk to about what you're dealing with and how you're doing, you know, how you're doing positively and how you're not doing so well, you know, not so positively, things you're struggling with. That would be my advice because I think we're living in different times, you know, in the past, it was all about, hey, you know, <laughs> do it and, you know, get up, do this, have your routine. This is what the successful people do and all. And all of that is wonderful, but I think now we need help. And so that would be my number one tip. Get someone in your life. Um, if you can't afford to pay for your counseling services, they have organizations um, that provide uh, counseling services to people on a sliding scale or based on your income. Um, they have support groups like I live in Houston and we have an organization called uh, NAMI. There's one also in New Orleans and they offer free counseling services, free support group. They've been having support groups for people dealing with COVID or people dealing with in lockdown situations, support group meetings for teens. Um, you could also reach out to your churches and 
you know, any type of faith-based organizations. Um, here in the States, we have Catholic charities um, and other organizations that can help you to get those um, services to speak with a counselor. Like I had a friend once who was really struggling and I told, I, I recommended that she go to counseling, but she was saying, I just can't afford it right now. You know, I have so many financial responsibilities. So I actually did some research and found Catholic Charities was offering uh, counseling support services on a sliding scale based on your income. So if you couldn't afford it, you know, they would offer it to you for free. So that would be my advice. These circumstances are very, very tough right now. And it's not something I think people can manage on their own or just get through by um, doing some of the things we have been doing in the past. I think it's time to really check in, speak with someone or a group just to make sure that you're doing okay. Even if you feel fine and you feel like you've overcome, I would say just do it to just check in to make sure that you're doing okay because you don't, like you said, you don't want the dam to break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happen and other air, critical areas of your life become a struggle, like going to work or, you know, helping your children with school or helping your parents or whatever other responsibilities you have. If you let these traumas compound upon you and things get overwhelming, you're going to find yourself struggling to do your everyday tasks and things that people depend on you to do. So that would be my advice. Just check in, get a mental health checkup, just to make sure that all is well. And if it is, you know, that's wonderful. And if you need some support, I would say it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength to ask for help and it's definitely a benefit to have someone that you know is for you and on your side, you know, and like you, as you're imploring us, as we are our number one cheerleader, you know, having others on our team as well, cheering us on and wanting to help us to be, you know, our very best. Yeah, no, you said it beautifully. Um, just to add to that, in the UK, there is a, a, um, a therapy organization that's called um, Frontline Therapist, and they deal so, um, exclusively with Black and ethnic minority um, people. So please do reach out if you're in the UK and you want to get therapy. Um, as Alison's already told us about great places um, in America to get help. So that's really awesome. So Alison, I just wanted to um, finish up by saying, um, you know, let us know how to get in touch. And, and thank you so much. It's been so, so enlightening. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share time with you. I know that you are, you know, you do so many wonderful things for people with your counseling services. And now you have the book where you're sharing your wisdom with all of us. And so um, I'm just so appreciative of you taking this time to give me uh, the opportunity to speak about my intentions and the blog that I've been writing and People can get in touch with me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm exclusively on LinkedIn as far as the social uh, media platforms go. And um, you can just look me up under uh, Allison uh, Neal and, you know, we can connect. So you can read some of my blogs and just kind of keep up with wh what I'll be doing next and where I'll be going. I'm hoping to transform the blogs into a daily devotional um, where people can read inspirational messages, have tips on things they can speak with their therapist about, and just reminding them that, you know, it's okay to not have to do everything on your own and to receive the support you need. You know, you have, if you have um, the benefits of having a healthcare provider, you know, primary care physician, a gynecologist, um, and other specialists, there's nothing wrong with adding, you know, a therapist to your support network. So that's my hope for our community, the Black community, that we embrace it and that we take advantage of it so that we can continue to accomplish the things that we all want to, which is to go out into the world, share our gifts and talents, to love others and to be loved and celebrated by others as well. So 
that is um, what I'm working to do. And I'm so glad to be connected to you now, to know you, and I'm looking forward to reading the book. I hope I can come back and share more time with you after I've read the book so we can talk about it and you know what it means to me and how I'll be using it and sharing it with others as well. So thank you for you know what you've done to step out, take this leap of faith, write your book and do all the things that you've been doing because I think your work and what you're sharing is a great example and a model and it fuels those of us who are doing our things to say, okay, wow, look how she's doing this and how wonderful she's um, having a time of success at it. It's like you're becoming a role model and a motivator for us to say, okay, this is something that we need to do. So I encourage you as well to just keep going and um, keep growing. And I'm so happy to be a part of your uh, success. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of where you'll be going from here. So thank, uh, you. <laughs> thank 